Well, we have a rather intriguing subject this morning, the problem of memory. And I think too many of us take the whole field of uh, mental continuities for granted, whereas in reality they are quite mysterious in their own right. Memory is something that we all need and we all abuse. Memory is something that helps us uh, to build a philosophy of life, and it also can help us to tear one down very quickly. It can strengthen religion or destroy it. It can lead to happiness or misery. And in many cases, it contributes to life and hastens death. So altogether, we have to give this whole field a little spe special consideration, especially if we hope uh, to unfold and develop the internal potentials of our own natures. To begin with, then, we have to try to understand that memory is a subject in great need of discipline. We must discipline the things we remember, and we must remember the things that we discipline. Now, memory discipline is something that is disappearing rapidly from our way of life. Today, everyone is pushing thoughts and responsibilities to one side. We are trying to avoid the monotonies and the routines and the skills which strengthen our memory power. Probably the most important thing that we gain from schooling is to strengthen and discipline memory. Most of what we may learn can perhaps be forgotten with benefit to all concerned. But the power to learn, the ability to maintain a continuity of recollections, the power to be able to answer the questions that are asked or to spell the words at the spelling test, these are disciplines of the mind. The multiplication table is a discipline. Practically all of the social graces are disciplines. And where these disciplines are not severe enough, the graces become disgraces. Every person must learn uh, to control and direct his own thoughts and have develop a consistent continuity of mental activity. He must be able to strengthen faculties which will serve him throughout his entire span of life. And today, we are subject to many interruptions, inconsistencies of thought, and a great many persons are deliberately trying to ignore experience. They want to avoid and evade the problem, problem of facing themselves. As a result of this, and other factors involved, confusion, stress, inconsistencies, the memory faculty is corrupted. It is damaged. And we lose the power to think from A to B and from B to C. So in childhood, we should be disciplined. And very often today, parents have not disciplined themselves. We inherit mental infirmities as a birthright. And the undisciplined mind, like an uncontrolled body, can be a cause of a great many problems. The disciplines we are seeking for are not only for the mind's sake, but give the mind the power to control and correct the mistakes of the emotions and the body. Without discipline, we cannot control ourselves. And we also have to have a background of experience to find out how to control ourselves and what we should allow and what we should not allow to come into our personal lives. In addition to the weakness of memory, we now find that there is a tendency to corrupt what memory we do have. Uh, today we are able to imagine many, many conditions and then bestow upon these imaginations the strength of a memory factor. 
Many people today are remembering things that never happened to them. They are also remembering how things that did happen were so distorted or misunderstood as to lose the power to contribute to knowledge. Memory is here to help us to learn. Memory is part of universal schooling. But in many instances, we use it as a method or means of evasion, to get out of a situation. We use it to impress other people with our importance. We use it also to shift blame from ourselves to someone else. We use it for all kinds of evasions and compromises of attitudes. The only reason this is possible is because we have never disciplined it correctly. The mind is almost like another person in our body. This other person can be a perpetual adolescent and also a juvenile delinquent. And the worst part of the mental delinquent is it may be juvenile and be 70 years old. <laughs> All the way along, we know that we are here to learn. We are here to grow. We're here to improve ourselves and to serve each other in useful capacities. And a bad memory frustrates nearly all of these purposes. The memory is essential to the preservation of any type of constructive program. Of course, it is also true that memory now is supported by the written word. And memory is supported by the, the press by the media, and by all types of subset subsidiary helps. But most of these helps are themselves corrupted. We cannot depend upon what we read. We cannot depend upon news reports. We cannot accept the opinions of other people. And deprived of all of these crutches, we have to depend upon ourselves only to discover that we do not even have the power to make an opinion that means anything. So the problem always is that the mind has to serve as a kind of guardian, a protector of integrities. And to do this, it is necessary for us, for us to have a full development of mental discipline. Now, this discipline must begin, as we have suggested, in childhood. It is up to our parents to see that we learn to obey. This is difficult because the parent hasn't obeyed in his generation and is becoming less and less interested in forcing unpleasant attitudes upon his children. The children, therefore, find that it is very easy to avoid or evade family discipline. And if it looks as though it might be a little difficult, the child may even leave home. Anything to escape the assuming of responsibility. And yet maturity without assuming responsibility is impossible. Today we have a mass of delinquent people who would be, who would be on the way to correct careers if they hadn't built a barrier against learning a barrier against experimenting and experiencing the constructive results of growth. After all, if we are believing in a divine plan, we believe that the human being is here to grow, to unfold his spiritual potentials, to become a little better every day. And this process, according to many systems, continues incarnation after incarnation always for the purpose of becoming better, always for the purpose of drawing upon internal resource with greater advantage to our own lives. Now, undisciplined undis internal resource is no longer an asset. Undisciplined, the mind can lead us into every trap that there is. It can force us to all types of mistakes.